It was an explosion of protest and emotion that quickly got out of control, and today there could be some fallout from it. Yeah, we're talking about protesters literally taking over last night's Albuquerque City Council meeting, calling for Mayor R.J. Berry and APD Chief Gordon Eden to go. This is no longer your meeting. This is the people's meeting. This is democracy and action. Very understandable people are saying there. The meeting started out just like any other, but it quickly escalated and got out of control with councilors giving up their seats. Some people there looks like had their kids in the city councilor seats. They were all upset with APD and demanding change. One woman even tried to hand police chief Gordon Eden a warrant for his arrest. The chief stood up and left without taking the paper or acknowledging that woman. We're not leaving yeah. this podium. I am not leaving this podium. I just saw a shot of the chief leaving there. Protesters kept going even when the city council tried to take a five minute break. Some councilors eventually returned, and that's when council president Ken Sanchez here tried to defuse things again, but he was drowned out by the angry, chanting crowd. The meeting was adjourned with nothing getting done. It took a half hour for protesters to go ahead and clear out of the city council chambers after the meeting was called off. Police were there, but did not end up arresting anyone. And after everything that unfolded at the meeting last night, City Councilor Ken Sanchez sent us a statement saying he adjourned the meeting because of safety concerns. Quoting here, unfortunately, this evening's City Council meeting gradually reached a point where, for the safety of staff, the general public, and the members of the council, I had to adjourn the meeting. I called a brief recess in hopes that order would be restored, but some members of the crowd persisted in disrupting the meeting. Councilor Sanchez went on to say that a special city council meeting will be called this Thursday to finish what was started last night, particularly to look at the council to see if they can find a way to take the power of the mayor away for hiring the police chief. Now over on KRQE.com, we have complete coverage of the takeover at the city council meeting, including a photo gallery. And what you really have to check out is a raw video that shows how the meeting deteriorated very quickly and how city councilors and the chief reacted to all of it. Let's this morning, the Santa Fe School District is investigating a school bus driver after officials say the driver is caught on video rolling right through a stop sign. People in Santa Fe's turquoise trail neighborhood say a lot of drivers, including this school bus driver, treat the sign like it doesn't exist. The video, which was taken by a resident, shows a school bus rolling through the stop sign on Highway 14 twice last Wednesday. The sheriff says he's going to be stepping up patrols in that area for now. Eastern New Mexico University is investigating several of its athletes after they are arrested following a huge brawl. According to an arrest warrant, university police showed up to the parking lot of a campus apartment complex in Portales last month in reference to a fight. Witnesses told police they saw a group of about 20 to 30 men arguing. Police say 17 baseball players were involved in that fight. They were all arrested Friday and most missed their game that night. After they bonded out of jail, though, they were allowed to play the next day. If our student athletes did something wrong, even though it's a misdemeanor, then they need to be punished. They need to step up and be held accountable. But that's the if. The 17 players have been charged with disorderly conduct. The university says it will decide a punishment for the players once the investigation is over. Well, two people are dead and a 15-year-old boy is seriously hurt after a horrible crash on I-40 near Gallup. A semi-truck slammed into a family's car yesterday morning and sheriff's deputy say it looks like the driver never saw the car get back on the highway after it pulled over for some car trouble. Natalie Levine and Damian Williams died in the crash. Levine's 15-year-old son, who is deaf, is recovering. The truck driver was burned and took in a lot of smoke, but will survive. Investigators haven't said if they'll file any charges in the crash. And police in Santa Fe are still searching for a hit and run driver who left a pedestrian to die in the street Sunday night. This happened about 10 o'clock on St. Francis between Sawmill and Zia. Police say a man wearing black was crossing the street and it was not in a crosswalk. Now take a look. They don't know who the man is, but they say he's in his middle 30s with a lot of tattoos on his left arm, including a tribal son on his finger there. Police say he got hit by a 90s Jeep Grand Cherokee, one that looks like this going to have a broken headlight and the front driver's side will be damaged. If you know who that Jeep belongs to, police would like to hear from you. This next story gaining a whole lot of attention on KRQE.com. It's a story about an 81-year-old cross-country skier whose family says he died doing what he loved. Yeah, a story will bring a tear to your eye and it will also touch your heart because rescuers found the skier's body in Colorado and with him 
was a friend who refused to leave his side. It's something the man's wife says she finds some comfort in. Robert Blake was out cross-country skiing in Lizard Head Pass near Telluride last weekend with his dog, Buddy, there. But when Blake didn't check in with his wife Friday night, she knew something was wrong. Saturday afternoon, a search crew found Blake's body under a tree in the snow not far from the road. And his loyal companion, Buddy, there, was still at his side. I knew Buddy was with him and would not leave him. I knew that, you know, just from my heart. Uh, there are a large number of coyotes uh, in the area, and uh, Buddy refused to leave uh, Mr. Blake's body uh, until we uh, spent some time coaxing him. Oh, kind of leaves you speechless. Mr. Blake's wife there says it looks like her husband had stopped for lunch when his heart gave out. Buddy is back home there in Corrales. A little comfort toy and comforting his other owner yeah, as well. Oh. Wow. But as she